Yo guys, what's going on? Thanks for coming back to another episode of Aura Audio. And today I'm gonna to be taking you guys through a tutorial on how to build oscillators. Now we're gonna be doing this in three ways. One, we're gonna do it the easy way. We're gonna get a little bit harder and then we're gonna do it through audio kit. So what is this idea of patching? Well, patching is exactly what this video is. So this is a video by Dead Mouse and this is him kind of playing with some of his modular synthesizers. And the reason we call it patching is because you can see there's a bunch of wires connected that generate all kinds of sounds. So as you can see, it's a pretty cool idea and there's lots of stuff going on there. I This thing is huge and I can't imagine how much that cost him. But anyway, we have to start from somewhere when we're doing this modular synthesis. So today we're going to be just building a simple oscillator. So one program that you can get for free on your device is called VCV Rack and it's open source. So that means that you can even check out the code for it. But today we're just going to use the program. So go ahead, go to this link and download it for your system. So normally you will have a different patch open up, but what you want to do is just go ahead and select whatever mod modules by clicking on them and just press delete. Uh, Cause I'm going to be starting from an empty patch. And then to add a module, we're going to press return, go to VCV and I'm going to do this VCO. Now what is a VCO? A VCO is a voltage control oscillator. So that's what's going to generate our sine wave that's going to make a sound. I'm going to set the frequency to 440. And then now I'm going to do something called an audio device. We have to output our audio somehow in the digital world. So that's why this audio device exists. So I'm going to do audio 8 and I'm gonna choose Soundflower as my output. So do Soundflower, because that's how I record it. All right, now I'm going to do the mixer. So the mixer is gonna to mix together a bunch of different audio outputs. And in this case, we're just generating audio from these voltages here. And so we're gonna send them as an input signal, and then we're gonna output them to our mix, our audio outputs. So that's how you can see how the signal flows throughout our patch. So first I'm going to initialize these to zero. It's always a good idea when you're working with audio just to see what your level is at before you start playing stuff. And I'm going to put this sign in input one, hold down command and put it also in input two. And these are our patch cables here. And then I'm going to put the mix to my left and my right. And then we're going to increase this. There's our sine wave. Awesome. All right, so let's close out of here and on to our next program. Our next pro program we're going to be using to patch these is called Pure Data. It's another open source program. And it's very useful for doing something called digital signal processing. So it's a little bit more lower level than this module, these uh, VCV racks, the Euro racks, but it's still going to help us accomplish the same task. So let's go ahead. You can download the version here for in this link for your operating system. And I'm going to go ahead and open it up and I'm going to go to edit preferences and then I'm going to select my audio device which this one should be correct. All right, turn on the DSP and I'm going to do a new patch. So how do I create an oscillator here? It's a little bit daunting. Well, there's these things called objects in PD. Those are basically your modules. And so I would do the OSC module. And that tilde right there means this is going to generate a signal and if I put the number 440 after it, that's the frequency of the oscillator. Okay, now I'm gonna do another object and this is gonna give my oscillator 
and amplitude. And how do we give things amplitude? We multiply those signals. So I'm going to do an amplitude of one. And there we go. Now I'm going to connect my patch cable just as I did in VCB rack. And now we're going to do an output device. So output, and this is a signal device also. And this is going to output to our speaker, whatever output we set inside the preferences. And then I go to edit mode by doing command E. And bam, we have another oscillator. Pretty cool. This is our last lesson, which is going to be using AudioKit version 5 to make an oscillator. Let's go ahead and do it. Create a new Xcode project. We're going to do an app. And then product name, we're going to do AudioKit Oscillator. And then I'm going to add an account. Well, first I'm going to change my bundle ID. Usually I, only, I like to do com. And then I will do my the name I put for my developer account. And then just leave it because it will automatically fill it in. And then I'll add my account. So how you do that is you go to developer.apple.com. Then you go to account. And normally you will sign into your Apple ID, accept an agreement, and then boom, you're a developer already. All right. So I'm going to sign into my account. And so once we have our account selected, I'm going to download the manual profiles. And then I'm going to manage certificates. And we can see we have a development certificate. So if we try to add one already, we can't do it because it already did it for us. And this is going to help us run our app on our device. So click Next. And then I'm not going to create a Git repository. I'm also not going to worry about the core data and the tests because this is just simple. We don't need to test it. All right. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Swift Packages and add that dependency. And which dependency are we adding? We're adding AudioKit version 5. So go ahead, copy the link for the GitHub, for the AudioKit GitHub, and then you paste it in there. And that's going to give us the AudioKit branch. For our branch, I'm going to do V5 main. And boom, just like that, we got the Swift package. All we have to do is click finish, and it's done. Now, one thing I like to do is go ahead and build everything first to see if it works. So I'm going to go ahead and select this target, select the iOS, whatever target you want to use. I'm going to do be doing the iPhone so I'm going to build it on my own iPhone, which is right there. So I'm going to have to stop recording for a second. Now my iPhone is logged in. I'm just going to leave it unlocked while I build this. And we can see build failed. Why did it fail? Because we didn't successfully code sign it so we can run it on the device. So what I'm going to do is go to my app target. So if I expand this, we can see this is my iOS target. And then I'm going to make sure that I select my developer team that I set up initially. And once that bundle ID is good, then we can build it. All right. So now I'm going to enter my password. Bam. It succeeded. So I just let it do its thing. Don't close out anything when you see this. Finish running. Let's try it again. Oh, okay. So it says preparing to install. I'm going to go ahead and start recording. Yeah, not really sure why that happened. But now it's going to try and run the app. As you can see, I have the app right here. And it says could not launch. That's a normal error because what you have to do is if it said that you need to install a profile, then you need to go to device management and approve this profile. Okay. All right, cool. So now that we have the profile approved, we can tap it and it just says, hello world. And that's fine. That's what it should say. So next I'm going to quit recording on my iPhone and we're just going to do stuff on here for a second on my Mac. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to something called the content view. And this is kind of the view for our app and it's used in something called Swift UI. So Swift UI, for those of you who are familiar with the view controller, it's a little bit different, but I'm going to walk you guys through it 
and you should pick up the kind of language right away. It's not too difficult. So we're going to do next, we're going to import our audio kit framework. And after we do that, we're going to create our oscillator object, just as we had in pure data. It's just that here we have to create our own oscillator object. So I'll call this actually oscillator object. That's what I'll call it. And I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do let engine. So a new constant, actually, maybe I'll make this var. I don't think it really matters, but I'm going to do var and then audio engine. So audio engine is basically the audio kit kind of master device. Um, so that's what that's going to do. And then for every class, we need an init method. So that's going to load each time we load the class. So you want to make sure you have that. So right when this class is first initiated, this is this init method is going to be run. Okay, so next thing we need is we need an oscillator, the audit, the audio kit oscillator inside of our oscillator object, and it's pretty easy to use it. All I would do is do var osc equals oscillator. All right, next thing we're going to do is inside that init method, we're going to set the output just as we did in pure data. So engine dot output is equal to our oscillator. So that's going to set the output. It's going to patch it to that oscillator, right? And now we need a um, start method and a stop method to start and stop both our engine and our oscillator. So how we do the start is we need to, this is the weird thing about audio kit is that not always the audio will start for some reason, and that's because something went wrong. So we need to prepare for that. So what we will do is we will say, we're going to do something. And if that something doesn't work, we're going to catch the error. So we're going to catch this error right here. And we're going to log that error just so we can understand what went wrong. And the thing we're going to do anyway, we're going to see if it works is we're going to say engine dot start and you can see it says throws. That means that this is something that can go wrong. It can throw an error. And so, and for each of those throw methods, we have to write the word try before them because it's like, we're going to try this, but it may not work. And that's what's going to happen when it doesn't work. So that's why we do that. And then before that, we can still set the, parameters for our oscillator. So OSC dot frequency, that's going to be 440. And then our amplitude is going to be 1.0. And then after we start our engine, then we can start our oscillator. And in here, we'll stop our oscillator just before we stop the engine. All right, and now all we have to do is inside this content view, once it appears, that's our view with the hello world. If you remember on a peer, we're going to start our oscillator. Um, and so we need to connect this oscillator object to our view. So how we do that is we create a new variable and I'm going to call this OSC obj, and that's going to be our oscillator object initialized. So what do these two parentheses do? Well, bam, that just initialized our class. So it connected our output of the engine to the oscillator, right? That's what happens. So now we can do OSC obj dot start. Cause remember we have this start method that we created and then on disappear, when our view disappears, we're going to stop that oscillator. Stop. All right, there we go. It's as easy as that. Hope this really helped you guys. Now I'm going to start recording just so we can see what's going to happen when we build this. All right, so now I'm going to enter my password 
easy way you can shortcut this is just click always allow when it comes up. All right. So now it should run the app. And initially it might make it might not make sound. If it's not making sound, make sure your volume on your phone isn't muted or your iPad. Now it should be making sound. It's weird how it's not. Oh, it's just very quiet. Now you guys should be able to hear it. All right, so that is it. That's all we do. So although we just built a simple oscillator, this is basically the introduction to building all sorts of complex instruments, plugins, and effects. And I hope these three ways of building these oscillators really help you guys understand that the coding, it shouldn't be the only focus when we design instruments, but we can also focus on how our signal is flowing through that instrument. So I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.